Welcome back to the episode of Buckley Playground. Today, I'm going to be making pure polyphosphoric acid. Now, polyphosphoric acid is an excellent catalyst as it is moderately acidic, very dehydrating, and non-oxidizing. At room temperature, it can automatically catalyze carboxylic acids and alcohols together to make esters. At higher temperatures, it can perform dehydrations, alkylations, acylations, and other things with alcohols and carboxylic acids. However, be warned that at these higher temperatures, it is also very corrosive to glassware, and it can even destroy them, so be warned. In the meantime, let's get started. The only materials you need are phosphoric acid. To make the polyphosphoric acid, I'm going to start with 750 milliliters of phosphoric acid. The next thing I'm going to do is weigh my crucible. The white thinning inside was from other attempts, as this is my dedicated polyphosphoric acid crucible. Next, I'm going to weigh how much phosphoric acid I'll be using. The weight is right at 1,222 grams. Then I'm going to place it on my hot plate, wrap it in heavy duty aluminum foil to insulate, and give it a big hood for further insulation and venting. Sometime while I was away, the crucible actually broke. I heated it incrementally by increasing the temperature 100 degrees every hour until it reached 400 degrees Celsius. I've used this strategy before, so I'm not sure why it broke now. The only explanation would be I used traditional soda lime glass rather than borosilicate used in Pyrex and lab glass. Repeated condensations must have weakened the jar up to now. Obviously, the phosphoric acid positively totaled my hot plate, so this won't be used anymore. Around the base, I had to put down some sand to limit the spread of the phosphoric acid, but ideally you should use kitty litter if this happens because it is designed to be absorbent. This time, I weigh a one quart Pyrex glass. It is right at 590 grams. When filled with 600 milliliters of phosphoric acid, the weight of only the acid is 972 grams. You may be wondering why I'm using less, but really it's because this is how much phosphoric acid I have left. Next, I place the Pyrex cubicle on my old trusty hot plate. I insulate it with sand this time to really allow even heating. Then I'm going to turn it up to 11. Lastly, I'm going to cover it with a pie hood. This hot plate, though small, can still go up to 400 degrees. I'll leave it like this for 40 hours. 20 hours later, let's check out our product. As you can see, there's a nice layer of polyphosphoric acid on the bottom and some large flakes precipitating on top. There's still a decent amount of phosphoric acid though, so I'm gonna let this continue for another 20 hours. Sometime later, when I went to check out my polyphosphoric acid, it was mysteriously stiff, even with the hot plate at full power. It turns out I completely burnt out the motor. Even at full power, the plate is completely cold. So, I get a conventional cooking hot plate. At full power, with the coils red hot, my polyphosphoric acid becomes runnier than skim milk. I can easily stir it with zero resistance, but be careful of flicking any droplets. It could scald you big time. When cooled, the polyphosphoric acid is a lot more stiff and paste-like. The only thing left to do is weigh it. The final weight is 1,333.5 grams. Minus the bowl, the total weight of the polyphosphoric acid is 793 grams. This means our acid lost 176 grams of water, 145 of which was free water and the rest as part of the polyphosphoric acid molecules actually condensing. But to know the average chain length of my polyphosphoric acid, I need to first find how many molecules or units we condensed. Since 1.72 moles of water were chemically removed, we've essentially condensed 3.44 moles of phosphoric acid. That means 41% of our total phosphoric acid became pyrophosphoric acid, in theory at least. In actuality, I really have a solution of mostly monophosphoric acid with some pyro and polyphosphoric acid floating around in there. Still, the average chain length of my acid is 1.41 units. While my acid solution is water-free and very hygroscopic, chemically it is not super condensed. Low weight polyphosphoric acid like mine can still make esters at room temperature, at least from my experience, but other reactions like dehydrating alcohols, alkylating or acylating arenes, and clays and condensations with esters require higher temperatures. But no matter how high you heat the reaction, polyphosphoric acid will never charge your reactants like sulfuric acid does.